Now we all love getting out there and hitting the trails on our e-mountain bikes, pushing our limits, but sometimes it ends up that we literally hit the trails ourselves. Now I'm talking about crashes. Now here on EMBN, we get sent in lots of crashes. So I'm gonna go through all of them, dissect them and analyze them and give you guys a few tips to make sure it doesn't happen to you. Okay, so kicking it off, we've got our regular contributor here, Christine, AKA the Squirrel Squeezers. Now she's riding a Kinevo out in Squamish in BC. Now this is a line she's already tackled on a normal mountain bike and cleared it, but she goes into it on her e-bike and has this little uh, bit of a crash here. It's got missing the landing from the rock she just rolled in, uh, rolled in from, resulting in this bit of a crash going on here. So how might she have gotten out of this crash? Well, first up, I think it's really important to get your speed dialed in a section like this. Too fast it all becomes a blur and you'll miss time those vital inputs to the bike too. I think too slow and you're gonna get hooked up, especially by all those square edges and the bike won't roll over quite nicely and you won't be able to hold your line. You're sort of losing your balance and gonna be all over the place. It's also really important to think how the bike is going to react to it when you put an input into the bike. Now, to me, it looks like the rear wheel is grabbed here by a rock edge as Christine goes to lift up the front wheel, making the front wheel drop super fast. In a section, uh, in a section like this, you really have to overemphasize those inputs, especially if it's on a downhill. If you go to lift your front wheel up like you would do on the flat, it's not going to have the same effect as it does when the bike, a bike is pointing downhill. Definitely, if you get a rock edge, hit that front, uh, rear wheel as you go to lift the front up, it's definitely gonna cause problems, much like it does to Christine. Right, time to look at the next one then. Oh! <laughs> now there's no better feeling than cruising through a nice set of jumps, nice and smoothly flowing your way through trails. But when you come up short or casing a jump or tagging a jump, it can definitely do pretty nasty things to your bike. It makes hor horrible noises and can make you crash too. And this is 63 year old Jonathan in Grenisize Wood on his Levo, giving us a prime example here. Now listen to that. Oh! So how can you stop casing jumps on your e-mountain bike? Now casing, tagging, coming up short, whatever you wanna call it, is due, uh, normally due to the incorrect bike setup. Usually your suspension is too soft or not set up correctly. Or even things like your tires mean that the tires can be slow rolling or on those steep jumps, sometimes your tires can squirm and make the bike do funny things on takeoff, as well as your body position, your feet position, all come into play too. Now I'm looking at this jump, and to me, it looks like he quite not, uh, hasn't got quite enough speed or puts enough body input into the bike and is loading that suspension up. He's literally letting the takeoff lip do all the work. He kind of blows through it, and hence not having that enough speed or distance to clear the jump and ends up tagging it you also really need to think about the angle of the bike, the inputs that you're gonna make into it to bring the bike up into the air, make the height, and then you're gonna drop down into the landing. He's kind of squashed through it, and hence that horrible casing noise. Oh! Right, next up, we've got Michael here, and he's hitting the jumps out of Swinley Forest on his high bike 6.0 all mountain X Duro. Oh! Now to me, this looks like a bit of a mix of bad bike setup and bad body positioning and the posture. If you look at how he's landing here, it doesn't help one bit. His bars are turned slightly and he's off to the side. He's pretty stiff in his upper body, meaning that all the tires and the suspension have to do the work rather than using your body to absorb some of that shocks. So when you come in from a landing, it's really good to use your legs and your arms and your back to absorb all those shocks. As you can see, he's stiffened up here and then turn the fork bottoms out. It looks like the tire pulls off the rim and he's straight into a big over the bar scenario. It's not nice. So how could he have avoided this one? Well, in a scenario like this, you really need to keep your weight back to land rear wheel first. It's quite a flat land in here. And also you need to think about keeping everything in a straight line, including your bike and your body. Make sure your shoulders are in line with your handlebars and your hips and your legs are everything is all in line. And you really need to use your body as a susp suspension system too. If you're just gonna rely on your bike, it's gonna result in something pretty much like this. Right, moving on from that one, and we're heading out to Austria. Now this is Claudio. He says he's hit the trails twice on his Canyon Neuron, and he is literally hitting the trails pretty hard here. Now, a couple of big crashes, 
it looks to me like a bit of a mix going too fast and not hitting the right lines properly and possibly I think your bike's not set up so let's go into this in a bit more detail <laughs> So to me, it's really tempting to ride new trails at speed, but it's generally a bad idea. I think it takes a couple of runs to get up to speed for me, but it's also a really good idea to ride them at a pace which is similar to your skill levels, particularly when you're out in Europe. Some of those tracks are super fast. You can soon find yourself getting out of shape pretty quick. And a way of getting out of this is by looking ahead. Just make sure you're looking down that trail and just take heed of what's coming up. You know, get your speed dialed down before you approach an object, rather than it being a blind lip or a gap, and you go sailing off it flat out, and it's gonna result in a big crash like this. Another real good tip for a trail like this is to look at the line that most riders are, use, are using. Usually on a trail, you're gonna find a nice polished line where everyone is going. If you can be, see big uh, skid marks and braking bumps, it usually means that people are trying to scrub speed off there. So just look ahead uh, and uh, think about the speed that you're attempting those sections. And looking into this a bit deeper, Claudia says they actually had a suspension rebound as fast as it can go. So every single lip or brow, the bike is pogoing up into the air super fast and hence all these crashes coming on. So again, bike setup is super important too. If you rebound, if you find that's too fast, just try winding it down, slowing it down a couple of clicks. It's gonna make it way more predictable when it comes to those jumps and drops, much like Claudio found out. So there we go, a few nasty crashes there and a few tips there from me too to hopefully help you guys out to make sure it doesn't happen to you on your next ride. Just remember crashing is part of the game, so make sure you're wearing the right protection to stop you getting injured. But let us know if you've got any tips on those crashes down in the box below or any tips you've got in general about riding your e-mountain bike in those scary situations. Love to hear from you guys. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and give us a find and a follow on social media too. Thanks for watching.